listener is about a telepath, Toby Logan, who obviously can read minds. And we pick him up in his life where he has learned to embrace his gift, the gift of telepathy. And he's having some fun with it in life. Way hotter than Michelle said. I wonder if he's single. I'm unattached. What? And he's also using it to actually act on people who are in need. Do you remember when Toby was helping you? I remember him trying. Yeah, where were you running anyway? Where were you gonna go? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense, any of it. You were upset. Something had disturbed you. There is a puzzle, and it needs solving. Pieces are missing. Toby Logan comes in and finds these pieces, begins problem solving. Okay, we're gonna need to take off these cuffs. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't think he'll give you any trouble. Detective, we'll be taking over from here. That's it? You just take my case. Yeah, it's not a problem, is it? <laughs> you kidding? We love coming to crime scenes and just leaving. Do you have any idea the amount of paperwork a case like this is going to generate? Always looking out for us. Thanks, Michelle. Good luck. Season two has a different energy to it. It's evolved, matured, working with the IIB, with Michelle and, and Dev. There's a lot more movement, a lot more puzzle solving and piecing, and it's fun. I think it's just fun. Lauren Lee really nails it. She's going to be exciting and entertaining to watch. It's very interesting coming into a show that has already had a very successful first season. Um, it's a little bit daunting, but you know, I have to say, very early on, I was told that it was really a whole new chapter to the show. So I tried to not think so much about, oh no, okay, we're, we're coming in, it's the second season, how are we going to fit into this show that's already established? Everyone has said that this year really feels like a whole new beginning. Toby, he was not very open with his gift, and it was sort of this big kept secret. And what they've done this year that I think is really great is that they've pushed all of that away, and we find out very early on what he does. I find out, a few of my coworkers find out, and so we're able to just move forward with the stories as opposed to each episode sort of going back and re-explaining his powers and how they work. The character I play is able to grab information that people aren't giving out, that they're thinking, that they're feeling, grabbing more exact ideas from these people. And it's a matter of figuring out how to dissect that, what it means, what it doesn't mean, if it's useful, not useful for anything. He's worked hard to shut it off throughout his life, and now he's opened it up. How is this undercover exactly? Nobody knows I'm working with the cops. Nobody knows we're working. No, no, no. I'm working with the cops. You're not getting sucked in on this. Oh, so you get to be Jason Bourne and I'm Johnny Lame Job? Thanks a lot, Senior Buzzkill. All right, look, first of all, you got to pick. Am I Bourne or am I Buzzkill? You could be both. I play a character named Oz Bay who basically studied to become a paramedic at the same time Toby did. They met while studying and getting their certifications to become paramedics. And they've come up together at St. Luke's Hospital. They've been partners now for about two and a half years. Oz is one of the first people who ends up finding out about Toby's power in the first season. So because of that, he's become sort of a confidant. Here we go. Thanks. Hey, uh, tell me you're not getting involved. I'm not getting involved. I mean, you can't help but feel for her, but I'm not getting involved. Who is it that told me that if uh, they go down this road again, I should stop them? What road? The I sense someone is in danger, let me try to help, and now I'm in a world of hurt road. Ultimately, Oz becomes a sounding board for Toby to try to figure out the pieces of his life and if he's doing the right thing because he seems to be turning his back on his duties as a paramedic. This new world that Toby's gotten himself into, I don't think Toby really questions it, and Oz sort of does that for him. And let's get you settled in over here. Here, let me help you with that. Oh, thanks. And I thought you should meet one of the paramedics that saved your life. Oh. Hey. Hey. So it's Anne, is it? Uh, that's what she calls me. After Anastasia, the lost daughter of the Romanovs. Oh, of course, yeah. Olivia is a doctor at St. Luke's Hospital, and she works alongside Toby in the ER. And she's very outgoing and supportive of Toby. Well, uh, super blue, toilet, and... Uh... Genius. Whoa, 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 you mean you're just gonna leave me here? It is, it was sketchy, but okay, just uh, keep a lid on it. 
You need a bed. Wow. Must have been some party. My character is the lovely Sandy, and she is the um, head triage nurse at uh, St. Luke's. I'll trade you that baby for this clipboard. She's a bit of a jokester. She's by the rule, she's by the book, uh, but just a real feisty, strong personality. Sir, look, this was all a big misunderstanding. Seems to be both of your fortes. Where's Logan? Still filling them in on what he saw. You know, I could have been slicing golf balls into the trees today. How do you think I feel about having to give that up, huh? Not uh, particularly happy. Well, I'm guessing you gentlemen are getting my next round. George Ryder, he is the supervisor here at the EMS, and everything has to be, you know, straight and narrow, cleaned up, you know, if there's forms that need to be filled out, he's the one who enforces it, because it all comes down to making himself look good. In the sense of Toby and Oz, he knows they're not 100% perfect. He understands that, and that's why he rides them. It's a group of law enforcement officers, sort of the, the, the creme de la creme, the, the best at what they do. And my character, she is part of the IIB. She is a, a new character to the listener. And it's always fun, you know, doing series work because every episode you get to find out little bits and pieces about the character. And so it's been really interesting finding out about Michelle and she's a little bossy. She gets to boss the boys around a bit, which is a lot of fun. It's an interesting dynamic, too, especially playing off of Craig and, and Rainbow. You remember you asked me to look into this uh, Logan guy? Yeah, what did you get? 18 months ago, this Metro cop, Charlie Marks, gets shot and killed. Every big case that she broke, the same name keeps coming up in her reports. Logan? Yeah. The capper? She lost her life in the end trying to protect him. Dev is a really fun partner to have. He's the in-house expert computer hacker. Originally, you see him as a fun, wide-eyed, bushy-tailed investigator, but as it goes on, you see that he has both sides and he can do serious police work as well. I think he definitely finds fun in what he's doing as far as being a hacker and doing everything that he has to do to help the team get by, but when the stakes are way up there, he, he knows what matters and he knows that when it's time to work, it's time to actually do good police work. And I think he's trained just because he goes out in the street as well. He's not just stuck behind a computer desk. Hello. Hi. Yeah, uh, we have a problem. Only one? <laughs> um, I just got off the phone with Revenue Canada and yes, they just recently signed a deal with Blind Data to destroy the Jericho 11 files. At the suggestion of Kenneth Niles, no doubt. Exactly, but here's the thing. Blind Data just moved up the data. To when? Today. I'll take Kenneth Niles. I'll take Peter Duquette. I'm in-house legal counsel for IIB. It's a hub for every uh, major police force agency in the country. And action. You brought up the threats. Keith thought of the man confronting him. Guy was pretty upset, said Keith didn't know it was like losing something precious. So why didn't he bring this up before? What do you think he's hiding? I don't know. Anything else? Uh, no, just stay close. Get a baby back in 24 hours. Chances are you don't get her back at all. I think we like superheroes because if you think of Spider-Man or you think of Superman, these are guys who basically don't go around telling us who they really are, but they come in to help us, rescue us. And I think there's something that people like about that notion of, I'm going to come in and do some good and then I'm gonna walk away. And I think there's something very honorable, there's something very heroic about that. And that is Toby Logan. I mean, he is a paramedic by day and a telepath and working with the IIB to actually solve some crime. So there is that wonderful archetypal hero. Hey, hey, Babel, it's okay. What did you do to him? I just uh, touched him on the knee and he freaked out. He cannot stand to be touched. I'm sorry. I think you need to leave now. It makes it easier and it makes it tougher uh, as, as Craig. Um, it makes it easier because you, you've developed the character already and you, to a large extent, understand and know him. And then it makes it harder because you want to keep pushing it and you want to keep discovering new and more things. So those things become harder to find because you've done so much work now. It's finding the little, little things. 
You uh, talked to that little brother, right? Mm. He's autistic. I, I had a hard time getting through, but he, uh, he's, he's actually amazingly focused on his own thing. You know, I have a cousin who's autistic. Oh, yeah? Yeah, my uncle Erkan on my mother's side, he married a woman with a lovely little daughter named Eva. You could name any date in history and she would tell you what day of the week it fell on. It was sweet, but kind of creepy. I uh, was inside the kid's mind for a few seconds. It was amazing because it's like he was living inside his train set. I think people are drawn to sort of the relatability of the stories, even though it is, you know, a science fiction kind of a concept. The idea of having someone in your life that reads minds, I think, is something we've all thought. And this way you can kind of vicariously watch Toby struggle with this power and imagine what you would do, but without being burdened with it either, because it is a burden. Those kids, they find their refuges. The problem is they're wired to keep the rest of the world out. So all I have to do is find a way into this boy's world. Mm -hmm. Just don't underestimate how difficult that is. I never do. I think what's interesting to have so many different worlds coming together is that there's so many different opportunities for storylines and relationships. These worlds cross. Characters need to grow and evolve. You know, I think it's important for that character to embrace it because it allows the audience in uh, that much more into his world and his life and his evolution of dealing with and living with, you know, this gift. People are drawn to a show like this because you have a guy who uses his power for good. He's just an average guy like you and me, except he has this extraordinary psychic ability, and he ends up affecting people's lives for the better. I think that's something that everyone can relate to.